So I've showed you how to build an app where the user can kind of enter information, all the posts show up here, and the app works with the cloud database so every user can see everybody else's posts. All right, one thing we haven't done is connect it to a, you know, a, a database that we can go check. And it, let me tell you a little bit about that. Um, you know, Dunkable works with Firebase. And Firebase is this kind of Google cloud service. It's really great. You can, you can use it for free, um, but if you create a website or an app, um, you can store the app's data there, okay? Um, by default, Dunkable connects your app to a default Firebase database. So you don't have to think about it. Like, you know, if you watched the previous video, videos and built your, your app, you didn't even think about the fact, you know, where that cloud database was or anything about it. And, you know, and with the default one, you cannot even view and edit it, which is kind of too bad because it's nice to actually go see your data, right? And you might want to edit it or delete things or whatever as a system manager, as an app manager, you know, not as a user, but kind of the behind the scenes person of this, this app with, with data, okay? So Dunkle will let you create your own, well, Firebase lets you create your own Fire database, Firebase database, and then Dunkable lets you connect, connect your app to it very easily. And, and like I said, it's very crucial for, if when you're debugging your app and managing the data, you know, yeah, we can see the data in the list viewer on, you know, on, the, uh, uh, you know, on this app as we run it, right? But we can't really actually get into the database and, and see the data there, so it's very helpful. Setting up is a little bit tricky, so I'm gonna walk you through it. And, you know, sometimes Firebase changes things a little bit, so you gotta be careful, but uh, you should be able to get through it even in just five or 10 minutes. And, and right, you know, it's kind of hard to realize that, it, that it's worth it, but uh, let me tell you, it, it is. Okay, so let me kind of walk you through the steps. So our app's gonna work exactly the same, except we're gonna connect it to a database that you own, or in this case, I own, um, and that'll just give us a little more control and, and also help us debug because we'll be able to see the data in the database. Okay, so I'm gonna um, bring up Firebase. And when you go to firebase.com, it's gonna look like this. You'll probably have to register and get, a, you know, get an account. All right, I already have one. So I'm gonna go to my console and then I can create a new project. And I, I'm just gonna call my project, you know, Coal Valley app, okay? And I'll just hit continue. And I do not want Google Analytics. This is kind of a test app. Analytics are for seeing how many people are coming to your app. I'm just gonna turn that off. Um, and then I'm gonna create my project. Okay, so this is just a kind of a configuration challenge. And you got to be very careful to do everything exactly how it needs to be, or or you, you might have some troubles. And that's what I meant by a little tricky. Okay, um, so be careful though, and you can literally get through this in just a few a few minutes. All right, so it looks like our project is ready. Okay, once you create a project, you need to create an app. All right, and I know our app is an iOS app, but really what we're creating is a is a web database. Okay, and so we're gonna choose this icon, this third icon on the right, to create our app. All right, and we can give it a nickname. I'll just call it Coal Valley Database. I don't want hosting for this app, and I'm gonna register my app. All right, all these things take a little time as the system kind of sets up. Okay, so it just created my app, and it gave me some configuration uh, you know, stuff here, which I can use and I need to use in Thunkable. So let me kind of move this over here. And this is how I'm gonna connect my app. I'm gonna use two of these um, settings in my Thunkable app. So over in Thunkable, and I just create a copy of my app because I wanna leave, keep, keep the old one that uses the default database. So now I've got you know, app two. All right, if I click on that, I can see my app settings. And if I go down near the bottom, there's these Firebase settings. And notice they're blank. Okay, when they're blank, it means my app's using the database Thunkable sets up for me, okay? 
And now I'm gonna switch it over to my own database. I'm gonna grab the API key. I'm not gonna grab the quotes over here, but just this long key. All right, and I'm just gonna paste it in here. And then I, the other thing I need is this database URL. And so command, on a Mac at least, command C is how you copy and then command V lets you paste it. And that's pretty much it, at least as far as connecting my Thunkable app to Firebase. Okay, I still have to do a couple more things at Firebase and I'll show you, show you what I need to do. So I'm just gonna continue to console here. We're almost there. Um, we need to do another thing, which is actually create the database that's part of what Firebase calls an app. Okay, so I'm gonna go to database. Couple more tricky parts. Okay, I'm gonna create database. And I'm gonna start in production mode. You might think test mode, but yeah, I'm gonna start in production mode and I'll show you, you know, what we have to do because of that. I'll hit next. And I'm gonna choose, I'm in California, so I'm gonna choose you know, somewhere in the West. You know, this is just where, you know, they've, you know, Google's got a bunch of server farms and that's where your data is gonna be stored. So I'm gonna choose that. And now it's setting up my database. You know, it's kind of amazing, right? Google is taking care of storing your data and not only your data, but the data of all your users who are using your, your app. So, you know, you know, this kind of concept of a, of a software developer, you know, creating a database in their garage or having a bunch of servers somewhere, you just don't need it. You know, everything's kind of, in the cloud and, and Google makes it very easy to, to, to set it up. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. Um, I do need to change this from cloud to Firestore. There's, there's a couple different kinds of databases they have. Now, another key you know, thing you gotta do is choose real-time database, okay? And then we gotta change the rules and the rules are just like who can access this database. So I'm gonna go to rules and you gotta be very careful, but you're actually gonna edit this and type in true instead of false. And we're just gonna make it kind of wide open as far as our database, but our app's the only one that's gonna to touch it anyway. And then I am going to click publish here. Don't forget to click publish because that's gonna actually publish the rules for our app. And, and, and there it is. Okay, and um, I think we're all set. We've got real-time database. Uh, we've got our rules set. We published them. And now I think my app's gonna work, but you know, let's see. So I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do live test. And um, sorry, I didn't show you my screen, but when I did the live test, you'll notice the app came up um, and it put, if you watched the earlier videos, you know, when the first time we run an app, um, if there's no data in the database, and we just create a new database, so there's none in there, we kind of put a default one, a default message in there, which is this welcome to the Coal Valley app. So I think our connection's working because, um, you know, it's just showing just that, and all that old data we had in that default database is not being shown. So I think we've done the connection correctly, but I'm gonna go ahead and test this, and. And I'll just enter some new new message here. Um, TP at Walgreens. And I'm gonna post that and it's showing up okay. Okay, cool. All right, so you might be saying, well, we did some kind of tricky stuff at Firebase and you know, and now the app's working exactly the same. Okay, and just let me kind of show you um, why it matters that what we did. So I'm going to come over to back to Firebase. So you know, here's Thunkable, right? We're, we're using that tool, but we're also using this other tool called Fun Thunkable, or sorry, called Firebase. If I click on data, I've got my database over here. And you know, I don't know if you remember our cloud variables called posts by user. And if we click on this plus, you can see all our data in our database. So it's kind of nice. I mean, usually our app shows us some part of the data. Your app kind of shows the whole list anyway. Um, 
but here we could look at all the data in our whole database, no matter what. And we, we could even, you know, choose something and delete it. Um, we could even add our own data, right? So, and by that, I mean, as a system manager, I could add some posts out, you know, not, not from using the app, but kind of, you know, beneath the scenes or beneath the hood, I could come into my database and, and change it, you know, how, how I wanted to. Okay, anyway, so I encourage you to go through this, do it, uh, make it work, and, and then every time you create a new app with a database, just do this step early on. And the nice thing is it really can help you to be able to view your data and kind of debug, debug your app.